As you likely know, creatine is very popular. In today's show, we're going to talk about best practices, what the study actually shows when it comes to when to take creatine, how much, and which different form of creatine to take. Should you take creatine monohydrate? Should you take creatine HCL? What about crealkaline? What about creabev? There's a lot of creatine products out there. It turns out there's different applications for different indications. For example, if you're suffering from jet lag or you had a really poor night's sleep, but you have to perform in the workplace, the creatine dosing strategies would be different compared to if you just want have a good workout or support healthy hydration or optimize brain health and beyond. Now, the lens through which I'm viewing and sharing this information is coming from both research as well as insider knowledge in the supplement space. I've been working in dietary supplement manufacturing since 2006. I regularly am in contact with some of the creatine suppliers, the biggest ones in the world, and look at their raw material data, safety sheets, and so forth, and have conversations with these different individuals. And so I, I I'm sharing both the research and what is might be considered industry knowledge from dealing with raw material vendors. Now, let's talk about the differences between creatine hydrochloride and monohydrate. This was a study that was published in October of last year, 2024, uh, titled Supplementing with Which Form of Creatine, Hydrochloride or Monohydrate Alongside Resistant Training Can Have More Impacts on Anabolic Catabolic Hormone Strength and Body Composition. Essentially, what these individuals looked at was dividing folks into two different groups. This was a study that was pairing individuals doing resistance training paired with taking equal amounts of creatine hydrochloride versus monohydrate. And at the end of the study, there were no significant between group differences between the monohydrate and hydrochloride. Uh, the monohydrate has been widely studied. I've been taking it since 1999. It does increase serum creatine levels uh, as well as strength and performance and numerous neurologic benefits and sleep improvements uh, and brain changes after sleep deprivation. Um, and so that's the form that I recommend. I am not familiar with a European-derived creatine hydrochloride. Uh, that would be interesting to uh, tinker with that. But I think the reason why pe people generally think hydrochloride is better is because there is, especially at higher dosages of creatine monohydrate, a connection with diarrhea and gastrointestinal side effects when you do loading phases because of the relatively poor absorption of creatine, especially if you're not pairing it with electrolytes. And I just want to pause here. And numerous studies actually find that when you pair creatine with electrolytes, you increase the gastrointestinal absorption and the cellular uptake within the neuronal cells, the oligodendrocytes and astrocytes within the brain, as well as the myocytes or muscle cells, because there's a transporter known as the creatine transporter that is dependent upon various electrolytes and things like magnesium, taurine, potassium, chloride, sodium have all, and as well as calcium have all been shown to impact the intracellular uptake of creatine. So I think when you're doing loading phases of high doses of creatine, not concomitantly paired with electrolytes, you might have more gastrointestinal issues. And just small plug, that's why at Myoscience, we sell a standalone creatine, the Create Pure material. So you can click the link in the description below and use the code podcast to save on that, as well as the creatine enhanced electrolytes, because we feel based upon numerous studies like this one titled Creatine Electrolyte Supplements Improves Anaerobic Power and Strength, a randomizable blind controlled study. Again, there's five different studies looking at the effect of creatine paired with magnesium, creatine paired with a micronutrient enriched, they call it an MPS. Uh, this was um, electrolyte, sodium, potassium, magnesium, taurine, and creatine show better performance compared to just creatine alone. And so I think, you know, if you have gastrointestinal issues with creatine monohydrate, that could be related to the fact that you're consuming that on an empty stomach, not with electrolytes. So the absorption uh, may not be ideal. So perhaps you could consider a micronized creatine or you could consider, you know, creatine paired with electrolytes. Okay, so that being said, let's talk about best uses when it comes to creatine. Now, number one, when you dose creatine, because again, what is creatine doing? It's helping with cellular energy production in your energetically demanding tissues, like during exercise, particularly anaerobic exercise. Uh, it's also helping with cellular hydration. So around exercise or around a sauna. So you, I, I, in, in my opinion, I think it's better to do it before or intra-workout. I know some people say, I just dry scoop creatine post-exercise. I don't know why that doesn't really make a lot of sense to me because again, you're wanting to take creatine to increase 
the phosphocreatine levels in your muscle bellies so that you can have more energetic potential during energetically demanding tasks like doing sprints, weightlifting, Olympic weightlifting, CrossFit, or high intensity interval training. Creatine is well known to draw water into cells. It, it literally, some studies say, pulls water into cells. So if you're doing exercise in the heat or if you're going in the sauna, it makes sense to take creatine before you embark on those tasks to help to improve cellular energy production. Now, creatine has been shown in sleep-deprived individuals to increase brain cognitive reserve. And so several studies actually find that when creatine is given to people with social jet lag or actual jet lag, and they intentionally sleep deprive these individuals, higher doses of creatine, like 20 grams per day, helps with that. And I will just say last night, I slept really poorly, only slept five hours. So before filming, I did three bolus doses of five grams of creatine, and I feel like it's kind of helping my brain. So that's just a little tip, you know, the dosing for sleep deprivation would be different than dosing for high intensity interval training or weightlifting. So I think that's important. And similarly, I think when it comes to cognitive health or when you're comparing an omnivore versus someone who's been a vegan or vegetarian for 15 years, that latter group, the vegan or vegetarian, might benefit from higher dosages initially or maybe even loading phase of creatine compared to an omnivore. Because if you're eating an omnivorous style diet, you're having eggs and fish and meat and so forth, your tissues are probably saturated with creatine. Now, if you've been a vegan or vegetarian for a lot of years, as you know, plant sourced foods do not have any creatine whatsoever. So your tissue concentration, especially in women, would be much lower when comparing that to an omnivore. So uh, there are some context there that um, I think should be considered. And it also depends on the time of the year. So if you're sweating a lot, you're trying to stay hydrated, you're exercising in the sun, you know, you live in a, a, you know, a hot, arid climate, you might want to do a little bit more creatine compared to, you know, someone who lives in a cold environment where they're not sweating as much. Or if you go in the sauna, it makes sense to do a little bit higher amounts of creatine because creatine helps draw water into the muscle tissue and help support healthy hydration. And uh, that can be uh, supportive. So to put a bow on this conversation, it's well known that the creatine transport protein depends upon electrolytes as well. So if you want to optimize creatine absorption and not have to take as much creatine, pair creatine with electrolytes. Again, small plug myosin, super convenient. You can travel with these sticks. Uh, a lot of great feedback and results from people just like you. Um, you can also just take your favorite creatine with your favorite electrolytes if you want. Um, even Dr. Peter Atia is now doing that. I, I see a lot of companies now promoting this, but they're not pairing them together. I don't know why. That's super weird. Um, for sleep deprivation, you know, if you're a poor sleeper, you're going through menopause, you're traveling, you work in the uh, ER, the night shift, or you're a shift worker, you know, taking higher dosages of creatine could help optimize brain health and executive function and cognitive function. So I think that's important uh, for anxiety, depression, mental health issues. Pretty good research to suggest that taking creatine concurrently with cognitive behavioral therapy or uh, talk therapy, psychotherapy. Uh, could be helpful. And so between five and 10 grams a day would help there as well. Children actually benefit from creatine as well as do pregnant and lactating women because the placenta is a very energetically demanding tissue. I mean, you're building a baby from a new, right? And so the placenta is constantly working. And it turns out that creatine kinase increases dramatically throughout pregnancy because to help support the energetically demanding growth of a new child. So uh, taking creatine while you're uh, pregnant is a good idea. And this is, again, why we would want to consider a European sourced creatine that's highly pure versus this variability in the, the purity and potency from stuff sourced from China. So those are my two cents when it comes to creatine. Uh, in brief, I would like to know what you think about creatine and how you've benefited and the dosages and the forms. Let me know in the comment section below, my friends. I'm grateful that you tuned all the way to the very end. Appreciate your likes, your comments, your shares, and we'll catch you on a future video down the road.